It's hard to believe it's been one year. You know, one year ago, China came out with a double reduction policy, which had a huge impact on the ESL industry in China. And many of the big companies like VIP Kid and GoGo Kid dissolved and changed, and a lot of companies shut down overnight. Hey everyone, my name is Tim and I'm an online teacher, business coach, helping online teachers to get started and thrive in this industry. And I'm here with a video, kind of a, a video uh, look back on the last year, what has happened in the last year since everything crashed in China and what teachers are up to now and how things have changed and in some ways remain the same. As many of you know, I worked with VIP Kid and several other online ESL companies and that was a huge part of my income. It was something that I love to do and something that I miss to this day. I am still teaching online, it just looks a little bit different. I'm teaching privately and running my own online teaching business. But the uh, collapse of the industry in China really impacted a lot of people. And, you know, almost overnight for many, things changed really quickly and many lost their jobs. So just to sort of recap, the double reduction policy was a change from the government to prohibit large companies from hiring foreign teachers outside of China to teach Chinese students in English. Now there's a lot more to the policy that I won't get into. You can certainly go and do your own research, but the way that it impacted online ESL teachers is that if you were working with a company that was based in China and you were working outside of China as a foreign ESL teacher contracted with that company, you were no longer able to teach with them. Now the switch didn't just flip completely overnight for all situations. Many companies are actually still in existence today, uh, honoring contracts that they had with parents and allowing families to continue their package of classes that they purchased. Now, many companies did close overnight and made the decision that it just wasn't worth it in their business model to stay open. And many companies also pivoted and changed. So they either changed their headquarters or they targeted a different market or they just alter their business model in some form to comply with the regulations. Take a company like GoGoKit. They were owned by ByteDance and they did overnight send out an email to their teachers saying that unfortunately they were finishing as of that day and everyone essentially lost their jobs. Uh, and that was a real bummer for so many teachers who were not able to stay in touch with their students. Now take a company like VIPKit. They pivoted, they um, kind of pivoted their business model to be a global platform that weren't targeting Chinese students anymore and they were able to continue running as usual with a slightly different angle in that they were targeting students outside of China. Now I don't know all the ins and outs and, and details of their headquarters and where their banking is and where their company is registered, but they're still in existence today and they are uh, offering English ESL classes to students around the world and there are still many teachers working with them. And then look at a company like Magic Ears that as of today is still technically offering ESL classes to Chinese students taught by foreign teachers outside of China but they are telling teachers that essentially once the classes run out then they will no longer have any classes to offer to teachers and students. So they're kind of able to honor those packages that were purchased. Now, I don't know all the ins and outs and all the details of why certain companies can do X, Y, Z, why some can't, but you know, you can be sure that they are in compliance with the regulations because of how large they are and you know, they would certainly want to be doing things the right way. So depending on maybe their location, their headquarters, uh, where they're registered, they all have slightly different situations, but essentially everybody is impacted by these regulations. You know, last year when all this happened, I worked really hard to provide resources, to provide support to teachers. I really felt for everybody that was impacted by this, and because my channel was a channel about Chinese ESL companies, I felt like I had a platform to offer support, to offer other options, and to you know help steer teachers into a direction that might be best for them. For many teachers, they decided, you know what, online ESL teaching is just not where I want to be anymore, and they took this kind of change to uh, help pivot and transition themselves into maybe a completely different industry, or maybe to go back to a traditional brick and mortar position. And that's what many, many online teachers did. And many online teachers did seek 
those same opportunities with non-Chinese ESL companies, some of the ones that I've mentioned in this video. And you know, while this might have been a great short-term fix, the pay is not as good and it's very difficult to find companies that were paying the same rates that the Chinese companies were for foreign native English speakers. And many teachers wanted to build their own teaching business and this is something that I did and something that I offer support in for uh, online teachers to be able to do for themselves to end up teaching their students privately. Whether you kept in touch with students from the company that you were working with or you were you know, looking at Chinese social media or other outlets to get referrals and to get leads, then that is a great option for so many and one that I believe can allow you to make more and work less and continue to be able to teach in this great industry that so many of us love. Please leave a comment in the description of this video. Let me know what you're doing if you were one of these teachers impacted from this crash last year. I would love to know. Are you still with a company? Are you with a non-Chinese company? Have you gone into a completely different job opportunity? Are you back in a brick and mortar classroom? Or are you online teaching privately and independently? Let me know down below. I'd love to hear what you're up to. I understand that a lot of teachers are concerned about teaching privately because it seems to be illegal and it seems to be maybe unstable and you know dealing with the Chinese infrastructure with in terms of payments and platforms and communication at times can seem variable and I totally get it I go through those same frustrations all the time but I see lots of teachers including myself doing really well and growing their business I always think that it's a good idea to diversify and to not rely on one thing and I encourage you as well to, to keep that in mind, that if you're teaching Chinese students privately, think about how you can maybe expand that business and find students from other markets in other countries and to use social media to do that. I think it's a, a really great idea to have uh, in your sort of plan for the future if you want to continue teaching online. Not that I'm saying that online teaching in China is dead, by no means is it there's always going to be students in China looking for private English classes and there's always going to be foreign ESL teachers willing and able to teach those ESL classes and the online environment provides such a great way to do that and we're able to make a great income while still being able to work at home and live the lives that we want to live so I think that um, you know while I don't believe that it's dying or that it's dead in fact I think it's growing I think it's going to change I think in five or ten years we'll look back and see a completely different landscape of online teaching but one that is still growing and still uh, something that we're able to be a part of so if you are thinking about online ESL teaching in China of course you're going to need to consider going private going independent so that you can make the wages that you're worth and what you are um, you know what you should be paid as, a, as an online teacher but it's always good to keep your eyes on other markets and to always diversify maybe it's not teaching in other markets but maybe it's creating something that you can offer to others maybe it's offering a course or offering um, you know a, a workshop of some sort or creating a product or something that you can sell under your own name. There's so many opportunities out there online to build a business and to create income. And I think it's important to keep in mind that the government is really going after those large companies when they're talking about the double reduction policy. And uh, you know, like I said, there's always going to be a demand and a supply for these classes. So if you're willing to tap into it, then it's certainly something that you absolutely can build for yourself. So what do I see in terms of the future of online teaching? Well. I really believe that it's not going away. I think that, you know, it's, it's, it's just growing and there's so many opportunities within online teaching. There's so many companies cropping up, different types of marketplaces, you know, really interesting online teaching opportunities that are, that are available to teachers. Sometimes you have to really do some digging and some searching to find them. But if you're in the space, if you are connecting with others, if you belong to online social groups, that are talking about online teaching opportunities, then you're going to hear about them and you're going to be able to have access to applying and getting into these, uh, these companies. So what I think all online teachers should be doing is building their own thing. I think that building your own thing is so important because it's not based on somebody else's rules and regulations, but it's your own thing that you are in control of. And that's why I love teaching privately and teaching independently because I'm in control of every aspect of that. 
You know, if companies crash in China, it's okay. I still have my clients and customers. I still have uh, students that want to take classes and are willing to tell their friends about me. And that's all that matters at the end of the day. So build your own thing. If you're an online teacher stuck in a company, consider going independent. If you're an online teacher, maybe you're, you've wanted to get in with these companies, but you've realized that they don't exist anymore. You know, certainly if, if, if teaching with a company is in your comfort zone to start with, look at some of those non-Chinese companies to get hired with. I have a couple linked below to get you started. You can also grab this free course, which is going to help you get started in the industry. And uh, I also have a course for teachers on helping them to go independent. But really, you know, when you build your own thing, you are in control of it. And so I encourage you to think about that if you're, if you're teaching online. I think the way of the future is by going solo, by going independent, and uh, by, by charging what you're worth, ultimately. You know, making the money that you deserve. I, I really believe that that's possible for every online teacher out there. If you would like to get in touch with me, please add me on Instagram and give me a follow. Send me a DM there where I will be sure to respond to you and answer any questions that you have. You can also visit my website, onlineteacherdude.com, to see what courses I have available to help and support you. Thank you for subscribing to all of you who are subscribers of the channel. If you aren't already, I encourage you to do so. It's free and it does a world of good for the channel. Uh, I appreciate you being here and I will see you in the next video. Peace everyone. Hey, don't go anywhere just yet. These videos might be interesting to watch for you and if you haven't subscribed, you can do it right here with one click. Also, in the video description, I recommend different products and services and ways that you can work with me further. So don't forget, look in the video description below.